Polynomial interpolation is the process of finding a polynomial which passes through a set of coordinates. The van der Mond matrix is a method of finding such a polynomial, but it's also a useful theoretical tool, as we'll see in this video. First, some background. We have n plus 1 nodes or coordinates labelled from 0 to n we wish to interpolate. Why n plus 1? Well, given n plus 1 distinct nodes, there exists a unique polynomial of degree n which interpolates them. By the end of the video, we'll have proved this theorem. Let p sub n refer to a set of polynomials where the largest exponent of x is less than or equal to n. That is, p of x in p sub n takes the form a0 plus a1x all the way to a n x to the n. And for our purposes, any a sub i could be equal to zero, though I understand that in some areas this definition might be different. Let's first deal with the uniqueness of polynomial interpolants. Suppose p of x in p sub n interpolates a set of n plus 1 nodes. p of x being unique means there's no q of x in p sub n such that q of x is different from p of x, but it also interpolates the same set of nodes and we can prove that no such q of x exists by contradiction. So now suppose that q of x does exist, it's not equal to p of x and it also interpolates the same set of nodes. We're going to need this key fact that a polynomial in pn has at most n zeros or is identically zero. For example, a quadratic has at most two zeros and if we were to find out that it had more than two zeros, we'd have to conclude that a, b and c were all zero. Because both p and q interpolate the nodes, we know they must be equal in at least n plus 1 places. By subtracting q from p, this gives a function that is 0 in n plus 1 places. But since p and q are in p sub n, then p minus q is also in p sub n, so it shouldn't have n plus 1 zeros. From our key fact, we have to conclude that p minus q is 0 and so p is equal to q. This is a contradiction since we assumed that q was not equal to p. Therefore, if p interpolates n plus 1 nodes and is in p sub n, it is unique. Ok, back to our problem. We want to find a polynomial p of x in p sub n which interpolates a given set of nodes. By definition then, p of x sub 0 must equal to y sub 0, p of x sub 1 equals y sub 1 and so on. This gives us n plus 1 simultaneous equations and n plus 1 unknowns. The unknowns in this case being the coefficients a sub 0 to a sub n. We can therefore rewrite the set of equations as a matrix equation. This matrix is the van der Mond matrix and it has the interesting property that each row contains x sub i raised to increasing powers as we move to the right. We have vector capital A, which contains the coefficients we want to calculate, and then a vector capital Y containing the known Y values at the nodes. We can now find capital A by multiplying capital Y by the inverse of the van der Mond matrix. The question is then, is V invertible? So our question, can we find a polynomial which interpolates a set of nodes, has become, is the van der Mond matrix invertible? And we have good reason to think it should be. We have methods like Lagrange and Newton interpolation, which we know work. So how do we prove it? Firstly, the van der Mond matrix V is invertible if and only if its determinant is not equal to zero. This is a standard result from linear algebra. But before we go trying to calculate the determinant of V, I should point out there's a particular form we want to aim for that's not obvious. The determinant of v is equal to the product of all x sub j minus x sub i, where j is greater than i. In this form, we call it the van der Mond determinant. So for two nodes, x sub 0 and x sub 1, the van der Mond determinant is x sub 1 minus x sub 0. For three nodes, the van der Mond determinant is x sub 1 minus x sub 0 times x sub 2 minus x sub 0 times x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Showing this formula holds true for the determinant of any van der Mond matrix is tricky, but doable, if you're given hints as to what steps to take. Let's start with two nodes. The van der Mond determinant can be shown to hold by the standard 2x2 determinant method. We have 1 times x sub 1 minus x sub 0 times 1. 
which is x sub 1 minus x sub 0. In order to generalise this to any van der Mond matrix however, we need to approach this in a certain way using certain rules of determinants. We'll illustrate how to use these rules with the 2x2 two two van der Mond matrix before taking on the n by n case. Rule 1. If A prime is a matrix obtained from matrix A by adding or subtracting a multiple of one row or column to another, then the determinant of A prime is equal to the determinant of A. In our van der Mond matrix, let the first row containing 1 and x sub 0 be row 1, and the second row containing 1 and x sub 1 be row 2. Subtracting row 1 from row 2 leaves us with the matrix 1, x sub 0, 0 and x sub 1 minus x sub 0. Feel free to check the determinant is still x sub 1 minus x sub 0. The second rule is that if A prime is a matrix obtained from a matrix A by multiplying one row or column of A by a scalar C, then the determinant of A prime is equal to C times the determinant of A. That is, if the entries of a row or column share a common factor, we can take that factor outside the determinant calculation. For example, we can now see row 2 has this common factor of x sub 1 minus x sub 0, although the first element is 0 times this factor. Using rule 2, this determinant becomes x sub 1 minus x sub 0 times the determinant of the same matrix with the factor x sub 1 minus x sub 0 removed from row 2. Again, the determinant is still x sub 1 minus x sub 0. In summary, we used rule 1 in order to subtract row 1 from row 2 and rule 2 to pull out the factor x sub 1 minus x sub 0. This might feel like a very long-winded way of doing things, but proving the general case for the van der Mond determinant essentially takes this form. For the general case, we'll use rule 1 to subtract the scalar x sub 0 times the previous column from each column except the first one. We'll start with the first row. We therefore subtract 1 times x sub 0 from the second column to give x sub 0 minus x sub 0. Subtract x sub 0 squared from the next column, and so on. Notice each column, except the first, becomes 0 after this operation. Now we can do the same with the second row, subtracting x sub 0 times the previous column for each column except the first. With a little rearranging, we see that each column except the first now has a factor of x sub 1 minus x sub 0. Continuing the calculation for the rest of the rows, we end up with this. Notice that each row now has a factor x sub i minus x sub 0, except in the first column. These zeros here now become useful. The determinant now becomes 1 times the determinant of this smaller matrix by Laplace expansion. Now each row contains the factor x sub i minus x sub 0, so here is where we use rule 2. By rule 2, we can pull out each of these factors, x sub 1 minus x sub 0 to x sub n minus x sub 0. Now, look at what we're left with after removing these factors. Firstly, notice how we've taken out all references to x sub 0. They're now in these factors. And second, that's another van der Mond matrix. More specifically, it's the van der Mond matrix of x sub 1 to x sub n. So, repeating rules 1 and 2 on this new van der Mond matrix, we can see how each time we would pull out a new set of factors until eventually reaching the 2x2 two two case. This is how we get the van der Mond determinant. And so, back to our original theorem. Does this interpolating polynomial exist? We first addressed the uniqueness part of the theorem, then reformulated the problem into a matrix problem, and found that the proof requires the van der Mond determinant to be non-zero. Finally, we can deduce that we can always find such a polynomial as long as the nodes are distinct. That is, x sub i is not equal to x sub j for all i not equal to j. If any two nodes were equal, one of the factors of the van der Mond determinant would be zero and the solution wouldn't exist. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.